Today, I want to share with you briefly on a topic I'm calling dealing with evil matches. Did you get that? I was telling people on a, on a, on a service, is it worker service or staff service? And I was telling them, please try and understand me because I don't have another language. So try and understand me, okay? So dealing with the evil matches. Do you get that? And I want to, for you to understand what that means. In this life, you can have things that don't match, right? And uh, you realize in life, God expects things to flow in your life. Because the Bible says, the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. In other words, if you are blessed, then there must be no sorrow in your life. Are we together? Now, if there is blessing and the sorrow, then that is an evil match. And it is not the will of God. And today, by the grace of God, that is what I want to share with you. I will read a few scriptures. Proverbs 10, 22. And that's what I quoted. The blessings of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth. Amen. Or the blessings of the Lord bring wealth without painful toil for it. Isn't that powerful? Now, if there is blessing and there is pain in that side, then we say this is none of God. I just want to mention a few things that I want to talk about. Number two, rich. A man who is rich and is lacking a hair. Genesis 15, verses 2. This is Abraham. Abraham said to the Lord, when the Lord came to him, he said, I have blessed you. And he said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who inherits my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? What is he telling the Lord? He is telling God, you have blessed me with all the blessings, but I am lacking a son who can inherit my property. And let me show you, church, it is possible for someone to look behind and say, God, you have blessed me with everything, but who do I leave this with? Every place I've got ministering, people have said to me, man of God, God has given me money, but I look at my life, there is nothing to enjoy because my children are not there to enjoy. And every, son, every father is a joy when he looks back and he sees people who can inherit, who can take his baton and progress the life and generation. And here today, by the grace of God, we are here to say there shall be a correction so that something can match in your life. I say there shall be no evil match in your life in Jesus' name. Number three is wealth, but not lacking power to enjoy it. Can you imagine that? You have the wealth, but you can't enjoy it. You have a good bed, but you can't sleep. The whole night you have no sleep. You have good money, you can go to hospital, but then you can't be healed. Can you imagine? You can buy all the best medicine you need, but you're not getting healed. I have been to places where people say, I have the best doctors, but they say this cannot be handled. I think I mentioned to you last week, I mean the other time I was here, how the Lord spoke to me and he said, it is not about things you have been looking for, it's about the presence of God. And I tell you, church, the presence of God can do everything and anything. And that is what I believe in. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. I was telling pastor, and I, you can ask Apostle Chipaya when he comes, because you need to hear this also. One time we are walking with him, and um, in this meeting, I think uh, that was in Mozambique. I think I mentioned this maybe. As I was preaching, I was talking about the blind Bartimaeus. You know, how he called on the Lord. And then I said, anybody here who want to receive a miracle from the Lord? The first man who shone was a blind man. And I, I, to be very honest, I never expected in that meeting to have a blind man. And my faith was challenged. I almost said Bartimaeus was spiritually blind, you know to correct, to make my sermon right. But Apostle Chippewa looked at me, and I went to him, I said, sir, can we pray for this man? He said, you are the one who preached, you pray. But to cut the story short, I told you, I wanted him to pray with me so that in the case this man doesn't see, <laughs> we can share the blame 50-50. But let me tell you this. One thing God wanted us to, me to see is that indeed 
His power is still working today. God is not dead. And he never said to stop. He said, go and work miracles in my name. And today I believe the Lord is willing to do it in this house. How many of you believe the Lord is in this house? God is in this house. I know the Lord is in this house. We, were, we have ministered with uh, my brother Bob this, this week. And one of the person we prayed for, and uh, he said stroke. And uh, there were no senses on his feet and uh, hands. But after prayer, she wrote back and said, now the senses have come back. There is the power of the Lord. There is the power of the Lord. Let me tell you, there is a possibility of somebody to be blessed with wealth, but he lacks the power to enjoy. Can I prove that? Ecclesiastes 6, Ecclesiastes 6, 6, verses 1. Then the Bible says, there is an evil I've seen under the sun, and it is pervertent. That one, I don't know which uh, version I use on this. It could be a new NTL. And it says, I have seen an evil under the sun, and it is pervertent. Pervertent means dominant. It means wind resplend. It means rampant. And it also means dominant. In other words, this evil is in every place. Can be in Africa. Can be in America. Can be anywhere. Because we don't have the devil of Africa and the devil of America. The devil is one. And when he plans to mess people, he messes them regardless of where they are. But we thank God, but we also have Jesus. And Jesus is also one. And he's in this house in Jesus' name. And all he says, it is a man who God has given riches and wealth and honor so that a soul has nothing of all that he desires. Yet he has not empowered him. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you seeing that? He has given him power, but he has not empowered him to enjoy that life. Did you get that scripture? Can you imagine? You have the wealth. Isn't that evil much, pastor? You have the wealth. You have all what you need, but you cannot enjoy it. You, are, you, you can see things, but you cannot enjoy them. But the Bible says it is an evil, and he's saying, I have seen it under the earth. And today, by the grace of God, we pray that anyone who has been going through this kind of evil matches, by this prayer, the Lord shall correct them in Jesus' name. I'm just mentioning a few evils in life. Number four is the evil, evil I'm calling wisdom and the poverty. Ecclesiastes 9, 14 and 15. It was that the Bible says, there was once a small city with a few people in it. And a puff king came against it, surrounded it, and built siege, uh, built huge siege works against it. Can you see that? Now, there in that city lived a poor, can you read with me? A poor, and... Now, can you imagine? How can you be poor at the same time wise? Are you seeing this? And I say, surely, how can it be? And the Lord, the Bible says, this same man saved the city by his own wisdom. But he was never remembered. Why? Because he was poor. And then he said, and I said, it is vanity. Why? Because if you are poor, your wisdom will never be remembered. And I ask myself, how many people God has blessed, but they have lacked wisdom? And how many people have wisdom, but the devil has made sure that you never enjoy resources? And I say by the grace of God, it is the will of God to prosper his people, but the devil likes to bring people down so that your wisdom will be behind. I hope this cannot be used against me, but I was preaching in one place, and the Lord said, look, if the enemy owes the resources of people, then they are doomed. And no wonder the devil went to show Jesus all the wealth of the world. And he said, if you worship me, I'll give this. Jesus was a rich man. He said, I can't bow down because of this. They belong to my father. And he, he was speaking the wisdom of God. And I said today, by the grace of God, we have to deal with this thing. Can I tell you, there are so many people who have gone through injustices. Because their resources were held somewhere. 
And there are so many powerful people who carry the word of God. But because the enemy has held their resources, they cannot be hand anywhere. And I can prove that. And please, don't quote me for wrong, but let me ask you. Look at me. Are you getting blessed with the preaching? By now, do you believe I'm born again, I'm going to heaven? Let me ask you. If I visited you tonight or this, this evening, and by God's grace, we also found um, Trump. What is his name? Donald? Donald Trump has also decided to visit you. So you have two guests, a Pat, Pastor Patrick and Donald Trump. And then you are so happy. You say, hey, welcome, welcome. And then you decide, let me go out and buy some milk. I want to make you some tea. Then you come later and find both of us are not in the house. And your television set is missing. Who would be the suspect? <laughs> Please answer me. Please answer me. With all the preaching, with all the anointing, having told, uh, you, you having agreed that I'm going to heaven, and you still suspect me to have stolen from you. Are you seeing the injustices people go through? When the enemy holds your resources, he takes you through several injustices. But I pray today by the grace of God, any money that is yours must be released in Jesus' name. The wealth, that's why the Lord says, may your eyes be open so that you may see riches that are there in Christ Jesus. Because if they are held, then the enemy can hold. And that's why I pray, even the church should be prosper. Otherwise, you cannot do this kind of missions you are doing. May the Lord prosper this ministry. Listen, having said that today, I just mentioned all this so that you can see the evil matches I'm talking about. Let me talk to you about one evil match I want to pray about, and that will be done. And we go to the book of First Chronicles, chapter number 4. First Chronicles, chapter number 4. And the one I want to deal with today is the evil I'm calling honor and pain. Honor and pain. That one, we are going to deal with it by the grace of God. And that is why I'm here to pray, and that is what God sent me to do, is to pray over this issue by the grace of God. And listen, Jabez um, was more honorable than his brothers. Pastor, can I use you? You stand up. Let me use you. Sit stand up. Look, let me assume, Pastor, you have other brothers, and then you are so honored Wherever you go, and there is one seat, you are given that seat. Wherever you go, and they are giving out vehicles, and there is one vehicle to be given, the pastor, you have that. Honor, praise the Lord. And let me tell you, it's such an honor, it's such a nice thing, that you know, whenever I go, I'll get the honor. But the Bible says Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers, but his mother named it Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. And I want you to see, to go with me. He said, I gave birth to him in pain. And Jabez cried out to the Lord God of Israel. And now, this is what I want to preach about today. And Pastor, God bless you. you I will keep you singing. That's how I preach. And uh, don't worry if I call you and ask you to get on my shoulders. I may do that. But don't worry. <laughs> but listen. <laughs> Jabez, look at his life. And he said, wow, I enjoy the kind of honor I get wherever I go. Praise the name of the Lord. But he looked around and said, but my life is full of pain. And I want an evil match here. You are honored, but there is pain. Wherever you go, people look at you. People admire you, but you are in pain. I remember this one man we used to, enjoy, to admire all the time. And this one day he called me. He said, I wish you to know how I admire you. I said, sir, you have all the money. You have all the vehicles. You have all the property. He said, let me tell you, I wish I can exchange what I have, give it to you, and I take, you what, take what you have. This man and a lot of money, I tell you for sure. But he told me I can make a pill of, my, of the money I carry. But I have never had peace. I go for, for nights without sleep because I feel like there's somebody running after me. I have security gadgets all over. I have employed people to guard me. But I see you sleep. Sometimes you don't even lock your house. I can't believe it. And that's why, Pastor, you're saying there is no fear in love. 
and a perfect love drives out fear. And I realize what a manner of love is this that Jesus has put in us. That we can walk through danger and they still come out on the other side and they say God has been with us. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that God will let us know that he has loved us so much. And therefore there shall be no one here who should enjoy honor and then pain is following him. And listen to Jabez. So Jabez realized this. And what did he do? He prayed. And he prayed a prayer that has four parts, which I want to mention today. And then we can pray by the grace of God. The first one is saying, oh, that God may bless me. Listen to me. We just began by saying, the blessings of the Lord make us rich. And in them, there is no sorrow. So you look, I say, why say there is pain wherever I go? Why say that when I go, yet I am honored, but pain follows me? I have talked to people, they say, we have done everything we could, but still there is pain. I, I know I did the best wedding, but there is pain in my life. I train my children in the fear of God, but then we get to a place of being teenagers, they disheartened the Lord, and this has become pain in my life. I have done everything possible to serve God, but when I look back, I see pain. And we are here by the grace of God. I believe I am sent by, by the Lord here to pray and to call the blessings of the Lord. The Bible says, when you shall see my people, number 623, Three, God said to Alan, you shall bless my people, saying, the Lord bless you. And you know what? That is what your pastor has been given my to do. To stand at the blessed. For whatever the Lord will bless, nobody will curse. Do you remember a man called Barak? When he saw the prosperity of the children of Israel, he called Balaam and he said, come, cast them for us. When he came, he tried, the Bible says, he could not cast them. And he finally said, those that the Lord has blessed, no man can cast them. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may the blessings of the Lord be so much upon you, that when the enemy tries to cast you to do anything evil, you'll meet with the wrath of God. Can I tell you, church? We carry a power of God. We carry a power of God. One time, we, we had some friends coming to minister with us. And when this man came, he said, I don't believe in witchcraft. I, don't, I also don't believe in it, but it is there. You know, even if you don't believe I am blind, I have it. You may not see it, but I have the blind. That's why I'm able to talk, to talk here. So you may not believe it, but it's there. So I took this man, I said, you know what, sir? Let me take you to a place and I want you to minister and see what we mean with witchcraft. It is there. It is real. Uh, it is there. So we went. <laughs> when we went, this one house we entered, we found the, 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 the witch seated at the center of his homestead. And he told us, you people go back. And he started rising from the seat. Coming up. Suspended on the air. So I asked him. Do you think there is witchcraft? He told me I'm not entering there. I said, no, we are going. We came here to minister. That man must be delivered. And uh, you will pray. He said, I'm not praying. <laughs> you know, because finally you have seen it. But I, I wanted, it's like God wanted uh, him to see the power we carry. Then I told him, let me tell you, it doesn't matter whatever this man will do. The truth is we have a power in the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how well he jumps around, there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. I told you, I think on, on Tuesday, when I, I was making this declaration in the church, and I said, this week, this year, nobody is going to die. And let me tell you, on, that was D January as the, the year was beginning, and December at around 11 at night, that first 11 at night, one of our sisters lost a baby. And she told the doctors, our, my, son, my daughter will not be taken to the mortuary until my pastor has come. So I, I received a call from the hospital. I said, please come. You are, one of your daughters has lost a daughter, and she has refused for the child to be taken to the mortuary. And this has been here for a long time. And the doctor says she has become hysterical. They're trying to eject her. She said, no, 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 no. I know what I'm doing. It is my father who said, nobody will die this year. And when I look at the clock, it is still this year. So my daughter has died before the year crossed. If she died after midnight, I'll be okay. But the one he spoke is nobody is dying. So when I went to the hospital, I never, actually never remembered what I said in January. 
I was just looking for scriptures to encourage her. You know, the Lord gave, the Lord has taken. Do you remember those scriptures? And as I was going, thinking what tell her, as I was going, I saw Esther running around, running around. And uh, when I just entered the, the, the hospital, there were two, you know, Asians and another African. And uh, they looked at me, okay, this is the man we have been waiting for? Yes. And he asked me, are you the pastor? Yes. Uh, this daughter of yours, as they were explaining to me, where the daughter was, I mean, the, the child was lying dead. She sneezed three times. Believe me, they ran, they put oxygen to date. If you come to Africa, I will show you. I said, this is the daughter. Actually, if you haven't followed my hip, you'll see that. And uh, let me tell you, the man was so happy. That he looked at it, he could not believe it. He is a Hindu worshiper. He pulled me, said, if it can work, follow me. He took me to the ICU. He said, okay, you pray for this one. And I think he gave me the, the worst. And I started speaking in tongues. He was looking at the machines. Me, I didn't know how to look at the machines. And as I prayed, I saw him and the nurse start smiling. And within a short time, the lady started moving. And they pulled out the thing. To date, her name is actually Grace. She is still alive working for the Lord. And listen to me. What I'm saying is there is a power in the name of Jesus Christ. And we carry a tongue to bless. And a part of a blessing is to speak life in people's life. And today I say, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord favor you. May the Lord protect you. And may the grace of God keep you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, we pray and say, Lord, enlarge my territory. That's the prayer of Jabez. And let me tell you, church, why God is interested in enlarging our territories is because there are people who will never believe in God until they have seen God enlarge you. Can I tell you, Pastor, there are people who may not have believed in what you are doing in this house, but the day they see what you have done there, they will believe in what you are doing. That's why I pray that God gives you the money and you finish that. And by the way, as I stood on that altar the other time, the Lord said, this place has already become too small. I don't know what that means. You have not entered, but the Lord said, it's already become too small. Why? Because there are so many people who will see the enlargement and believe in God. Glory be to God. Can somebody lift your hand and say, Father, we believe in your hand. Say, Lord, I believe in your word. Listen, there is the enlargement that is coming your way. There is someone in this house who has been wondering, God, how will I survive? God says, I am ready to enlarge you, but you must make a prayer. That's what Jabez said, Lord, enlarge me. Let me tell you, every time God enlarges you, even the enemy notices the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter number 1, when the children of Israel increased, even the king of Egypt saw and noted them. And he said, let us deal with these people shrewdly. Why? Because they have increased. And listen, the command of God, he said, go and increase. And every time the enemy see, in, sees increase, he fights the people of God. What do I say today? May the Lord increase you. May the Lord increase your faith. May the Lord increase your faith. I pray that in this house, God will increase someone's faith by the grace of God. When you leave this place, may you live carrying the presence of the Lord. When you go, go with the boldness, the faith that comes in the name of Jesus Christ. If you find a sick person, lay hands on them. Because the Lord has said, go and heal the sick. I'm praying, am I speaking to somebody in this house? Enlarge me, O Lord. Enlarge me. When you enlarge, you'll be noted. When you enlarge, even the enemy gets uh, offended. That's why I pray the Lord blesses even this land. And the Bible says, he's saying, God bless me, and the Lord bless him. But then he's saying, and when you bless me, Lord, let your hand be with me. Let your hand be with me. That is prayer. Listen. I don't know about America. I've, of course, I've told you this is my first <laughs> American church to preach in. But let me tell you about Africa. We, we are people, Pastor, who really look for God. They want to serve the Lord. Why? Because they believe God will bless them. They come, they pray, and God blesses them. And one of the things in Africa that is so special, and we can tell, you can tell someone is blessed, is when he gets a car. Because cars are not, it's not anything you can just get. I mean, and the people pray, God bless me with a car. God bless me with a wife or a husband. And I tell you, they are really committed. The moment the blessings of the Lord land in their hands, you never see them in the house of God again. 
Have you ever seen that? There are people, because they have a problem. Do you remember the story of the ten lepers? They say, Jesus, heal us. Jesus healed them, and then they left him. Only one came back to say thank you. And Jesus said, were there not ten? And how many people have called on the Lord, and they are saying, God, enlarge me. They have been enlarged, and we never see them in the house of God. I pray that God will enlarge you, but you also remain in the presence of God. God is interested. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. God is interested in blessing us. That's why the story of the prodigal son, he went to the father and said, give me what belongs to me. And the father was willing to give because he wants to give. God has no problem giving us, but the question is this. When you get, where do you stay in my presence? God is more concerned having you than having you have things. Am I speaking to somebody? God is concerned about you. When Saul went looking for his father's donkeys, the Bible says when he could not get the donkeys, he said, let's go back to our father, for he may now be looking, thinking about us. And for sure when they went, the Bible says, and the father was more worried about Saul than he was worried about the donkeys. God is more concerned about you than he is concerned about you us. Amen. And so this man says, bless me. And when you are blessed me, hold my hand. Come, pastor. Let me show you something. And I love you. Man, you bless me so much. I've still remembered that Abraham looked for a promise, but, Adam, but uh, Lord, paradise. You see, I'm a good student. Yeah. <laughs> Look, when the Father holds your heart, Jesus said, whoever you are put in my hands, nobody will take him from you. Are you seeing that? Anytime you see a son walking with a father, he has all the confidence because the father is with him. He doesn't care what, what people say. He doesn't care what he does to them. What he knows is the father is with me. And this man says, when you are blessed me, on my hand. Oh, glory be to God. Let's assume I'm your father. And these people are all your age mates. And now you're with your father. Do anything to them. Do anything. Mimic them. Because the father is holding. Do anything. Do look at them and do anything to them. <laughs> do anything to them. Are, are you seeing that? Yeah, yeah. Do you know why? Because nobody will ask him. The father is holding his hand. And what a blessing. I tell people, anything that God put in you and you give it to him will never leave your hands. So Come on. Hallelujah. God asked Moses, Moses, what is it that you are holding in your hands? He said, it's a staff. From that time, the Lord said, drop it, it became a snake. And then the Lord picked it again. He picked it. Do you know from that time, it was never called the rod of Moses. It was called the rod of God. Every time he said, he told Joshua, you go to the valley, and I'll go to the mountain, myself, and Joshua, I mean, Aaron and all, plus the staff of God. It's not being the staff of man. And I say, did you go back? You are blessed. Listen. <laughs> when the Father holds your hand, you don't fear a thing. I pray today by the grace of God, God will hold your hand. And you see, if he holds your hand, oh, glory be to God. When God holds your hand, he directs you. He directs you. And you know what the Bible says? He leads us to green pastures. You will not lead us to the wilderness. He knows where there is grass. And the Lord lead us. We are sheep of his pasture. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that God owned your head. There are people, when they prosper, they run away from God. Let me tell you, you know, in our church, we have a man, every day, he does things that touch my heart. He comes to clean the church. He comes to collect all the litter around the compound. And on top of that, because, of course, Africa can be dusty, he comes and they take my shoes to polish them. Sometimes I feel like shedding tears. And this one day we were sitting in my office with another pastor, and he came in. He asked the pastor, please, would I, can I have your shoes? I want to go and polish them. And he picked the shoes, and when he was going, this pastor looked at me and said, you have oppressed these people. You have oppressed them. I said, why? He said, can you imagine a grown-up who is married with children coming to brush shoes for, your, for people here? This is oppression. I said, sorry. So what do you think? He put out a dollar, and he said, I would want to bless him. Then he went. When the man brought the shoe, I told him, before you give him money, ask him what you can pray for him. And this man came, and he asked him, sir, I would want to bless you. 
what can I tell God? And you know what he told him? He told him, thank you, sir. I, he was holding one dollar in his hand. He said, thank you, sir. I am a manager of an airline. All this plane you see flying above me, I'm the one who signed for them to go. I don't serve this man and God because I need anything. I serve this man because I am a servant in the house of God. <laughs> Amen. This is a man who has been blessed by the Lord, but he still he is held by the Lord. I saw that man literally phoned and cringe one dollar and they cringe it and they put it back in the pocket because he knew this is not the value of this man. God does bless him, but he still remains in the presence of God. How many of us, when God has lifted you, you still humble at the feet of Jesus Christ? Glory be to God. Do you remember Mary and Martha? They sent to Jesus the same ones. Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. But for Martha, for Mary, she went down to worship. And he said, Lord, if you are here, my brother would not have died. And they sheet. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus wept. Touched by those ones. You can say the same ones, and there's another one say the same ones, but one person has more impact in people's life. Because of where you stay, are you a worshiper? Do you leave a presence of God because of the things you have gotten, or do you walk with this God? You know, we went somewhere, sir. We were talking, and I think uh, Brother Bobby will tell you this. And uh, we talked about Church 1132. Somebody who doesn't know us, and he said, he knows you. Yeah, he says he knows you. And he said, you learned worship somewhere, and she was so blessed. Can you imagine? Stay there. The Lord will pronounce your name. Places that no man can pronounce you. <laughs> then after that, he made another prayer. He said, keep me from harm. I love this. Every time God blesses you, the enemy rises. Every time God starts lifting you, the enemy wants to fight you. But let the Lord hold you. He will keep you from harm. I pray for you. You shall be free from harm. You shall be kept away from harm. The Bible says what? The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. John 10, 10. But the Lord came to give us life. The enemy works to inflict pain in our lives. But you know what the Bible says? Jesus came to take away that. I want to give you four things you must do as we deal with this with this uh, issue. Number one, research about your life. Research about your life. Don't live a life that you don't understand. Why have I gone through this? I realized in our lives, in our family, there was an evil that really messed our life. All of us suffered so much until we got into the root of our life and we realized there is a generational thing that we needed to deal with. My brother got into drugs, and we followed and we realized he was, called after, he was named after someone, and that person was always in drugs. And we said we can deal with this because we have a God who blesses. There are people who go through issues not because of you, but because of the people. Research into your life. Jabez was told he must have researched. Don't you think so? Because he could not know what was happening the day he was born. It is him right here. When I was born, my mother called me pain. He must have gone asking people, why am I called Jabez? Why are you there when I was born? He must have met somebody who knew it and said, the day you were born, your mother was in so much pain and he called you Jabez. Research over your life. Number two, when you research, please don't ignore it. Deal with it. He researched. He was told the truth. And when he got the truth, he prayed. Number, three, number two, pray. When you get the answer, pray. Why am I saying this? If you don't pray, you'll lose it. Jesus said, pray. And I say, pray. And today we are here to pray. And number three, believe in the word of God. Whatever God says today is what he means for you. Number five, and I finish. Number four is believe in the prophets of God. This man is here to speak to you every day to pronounce the mind of God. If you believe in what he says, that is. Is what will work for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God.